Nikki and I'm Rachel and we're the Stitch Sisters and we're back with the second part of our stash attack today yes, wearing our we lovely are. new things it took us a little bit longer than planned we were originally going to do it after two weeks but mm. in the end we settled on three and hopefully that's given a few of you a bit more time to sew your own stash attack if you were choosing to join along with us I made McCall's M7577 so if you've watched the first part then you'll know what patterns that we chose but just to recap the whole point of a stash attack is that you pick a fabric and a pattern from your stash and make that garment um, and they're the only rules it has to be something that you already own that you're not going out and buying something specifically so I chose three patterns from Nikki's stash and gave her the option to choose one of those she did the same for me and specifically it was view D on this pattern which is the jumpsuit that I chose to make and I made it in this heavy crepe so we'll insert some pictures but I'll stand up briefly so it's a very heavy crepe fabric and I wasn't entirely sure how it was going to work out for a summer jumpsuit obviously it's sleeveless um, but actually I found that it's maybe a, a little bit cooler than I thought it might be so mm. I think polyester is one of those things that sometimes can be really hot mm. I'm not sure it's one that I'll take on holiday with me because I won't want to wear it in those kind of temperatures it's quite heavy isn't it that it kind is, of fabric yes. it's quite heavy it feels heavy in the hand it is so yes. actually wearing it so it might have been in hot conditions might be too much yeah exactly so I think it's going to stay at home when I go on holiday but it will be great for wearing in the summer and for any of you guys who also live in the UK or have visited the UK you'll know that our weather is very changeable so mm. just because it's the summer doesn't mean that you're going to get hot weather no there are plenty of days <laughs> where it's going to be dry but overcast and this would be the perfect outfit to wear then yes so just to tell you how I made it and the adjustments that are made and all those kind of things um so this pattern if I followed the size chart on the back of the envelope for my measurements I should have made a size 16 on my top half and my waist my bust and my waist and then graded out to a size 20 on my hips now if you've watched our commercial patterns class our online class you will know that that's not the way that we like to choose our pattern sizes no. that it's much better to understand how much ease is in the pattern and how you want it to fit on you so based on all of that I ended up choosing a size 14 for my top half and then I graded to a 16 on my bottom half um, and I knew that that was going to fit me well enough I also knew that because it's a wrap I might have it might be a little bit too tight on the bust and that would cause gaping so I did a small uh, full bust adjustment so I did a one inch full bust adjustment just to mean that I had plenty of room to overlap and that I wasn't going to be flashing anything that I didn't want to to anyone else. As it's turned out, I still ended up sewing a little popper just on the front there. That's simply because the bras that I choose to wear on an almost daily basis have quite a wide front. Um, and it just meant that um, you could still see a little peak of my bra. Um, mm -hmm. If I'd wore a different bra, it would be absolutely fine. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll happily cut the pattern off if I decided I want to wear it sometime in the evening. And I want to wear it slightly more low cut yeah um although someone very kindly pointed out on instagram when i gave them a sneak peek and revealed what we were making for our stash attack that that wasn't all i was revealing so <laughs> i guess the cleavage isn't for everyone but personally i'm more than happy to show a little bit off <laughs> so it doesn't bother me in the slide so one thing to point out with this pattern is that because i chose to size down and i'm really happy with the way that it fits as a result um there is no zip or fastening to get in and out of the jumpsuit you literally put it down and off and because it is a slightly smaller size it is a little bit tight getting it on and off but that's totally fine I just had to wiggle into it and pull up the shoulders so if that doesn't bother you then you can feel free to size down as well uh, there's a couple of changes that I would make if I did it again um, so this has one of those elastic waistbands where um, what you do is you sew the bodice to the trousers with a one inch seam allowance and then in that extra wide seam allowance is where you insert your elastic. Now what that means is you've got this free sort of chunky seam with the elastic in and it's just kind of doing whatever it wants to do sometimes going up and sometimes okay. going down and that for me is a little bit annoying so I think if I was to do it again I'd actually make an elastic casing mm. um, so I just cut a piece of fabric a bit like bias binding uh, press the two raw edges in and then stitch that to the underside um, so that I could actually feed the elastic in and it would sit flat against my body rather than Underside, horizontally yeah. 
because that is a little bit annoying. I fixed it slightly by just stitching the elastic. I decided I preferred it up, so I stitched the casing up to, uh, in mm. the seat in the side seam, stitched in the ditch, and that meant that it doesn't move around quite so much. Mm. Um, and then the only other difference that I made was that I yeah, it's supposed to have a five eighth hem on the bottom. It was too long for me anyway. I wanted it to be that length where I could wear it with wedges or something like that, but I could also wear it with flats. Um, if I wanted to wear it with flip-flops or something. So I ended up doing a two inch hem and I just left it as a deep hem because I quite like how that looks. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, and yeah, I think that's just about it. Yeah, <laughs> Lots right. of changes as always. I'm sure Nikki's <laughs> will be straight out of the box. Yeah. <laughs> but that's, that's the way we usually do these things. So that's absolutely fine. Uh, it looks lovely on you. I think it looks really, really nice. And I think you might get a lot of wear out of it in our summer. I think it might be too heavy for, for holiday, particularly yeah. in 40 degree temperatures. Yes, but yes. I think it looks great on you. Thank and you. it's great to use that fabric because you've had that for as long as we've known each other. Virtually. Yeah, absolutely. So I have. I've had it for at least four years, I think. Mm. And um, and when it came to styling it, I don't know why, but as soon as I imagined wearing it, I immediately thought I needed a Panama. So <laughs> I've been meaning to buy one of those for ages. And it's an excuse to have finally bought one so that's what I did a Panama some uh, chunky jewellery so a burnt orange chunky wooden necklace and this lovely cuff from Le Georgette uh, which we mentioned in the last episode of what we loved this week which was mm. gifted to us this is actually a hybrid of mine and Nikki's yes because it's Nikki's uh, band it's her rose gold band um, but it's uh, it's my insert <laughs> We're swapping already. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so tell me about yours. Well, like you said, mine is literally straight out of the packet. I didn't do any um, adjustments to it. I don't think I, I might have added a little bit of length. I didn't have uh, too much fabric to play with. So I just added, I think, about an inch. That was all I added yeah. to the length. And then nothing else except I made the belt separate. Right. So I um, rather than, sewing it, rather than sewing it into the back, I wanted to have the option of wearing it um, looser without the belt on it. And I also made the belt double the length Excellent. because then I can wrap it. I quite like belts that start on the front and wrap around, and then so I've got more versatility with it as well. But I can leave it off if I want to. So other than that, I have sewn up a little bit on the front. I think I will sew up another little bit because you can just see the bottom of my bra, which um, is not something I don't normally wear dresses. I think this is the first dress I've ever made that has cleavage so it's um it's quite a new thing to me so it may just keep creeping up until i'm i'm happy with it i think you should leave it i mean i've already said my views on cleavage so clearly i'm not yeah. shy but i think it makes you feel good and also i know you felt awkward when you were taking the pictures um yeah. but as we were joking afterwards when you get to our age you have to celebrate your assets <laughs> and nikki's well, got, got some them. great assets so if i was her i wouldn't sew it up i'd leave them out proud well <laughs> we, might, we might see. We might. I might need to wear it a couple of times to get a bit, a bit more brave with it. I absolutely love it. I love the sleeves. I love this colour on me and everything as well. I love the fabric. And it was only cheap. It was only um, from the textile centre uh -huh. that I bought it at the knitting and stitching show. And I think it was like £4 a metre or something mm -hmm. like that. So it wasn't expensive. So in the end, it didn't turn out to be a really expensive dress to make. But I think it's really stunning. And it's I think, gorgeous colour I, think I might wear it to... I've got a 2D wedding coming up and I might wear it to one of the days of that oh, yeah. so which will please my husband because he he likes the cleavage <laughs> <laughs> that's so not surprising it will keep him happy yes. <laughs> <laughs> but i love this dress I'm, I'm glad i finally made it I, I think i would make another one i would like to make a full length one once you, once you make one yeah <laughs> So they are I, addictive because they're so quick as well. They're really quick, yeah. but they're really comfortable. It doesn't it doesn't feel like it's fitted, mm -hmm. and you can you know I, I think that's why I wanted to leave the 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 waistband or the belt on the waist free uh -huh. because then I can have it cinched in if I want to feel that way but I can also just let it drape and it's not f like so fitted against the body yeah. it sort of skims down from from underneath your boobs so it, it doesn't it doesn't feel kind of too restrictive are you yes. as well so yeah. I'm taking mine on holiday definitely yes, well, of course it's a perfect <laughs> holiday dress so tell us about the sizing what size did you make I made a medium um which I think was it was what you made yes um, so I just basically... I'm not sure what it, we should have made based on our measurements. Um, we probably should have made a large 
yeah looking at the yeah. size chart large we should have made for our measurements yes mine should have been large with extra large on the bottom half but okay. clearly we both just made a medium so but again yes. that's another example of ignoring exactly. the size charts and doing what you think is right yeah for you. absolutely and and finding the right ease for you and i think if it if i had if i had made of large i think it would have been way too gapy on yeah. the top and i would every time i sat down and that's the problem with really low cut dresses or wrap dresses as well mm -hmm. anything that's got your cleavage out down here um it means that whenever you sit down there's there's less strain on the dress because it's not hanging from your shoulders the weight isn't hanging down so you get this gaping on the front mm -hmm. so if it had been any bigger it would have been doing that all the time and i think it would have yeah. been just too uncomfortable for yeah. me to wear yeah i think um one of the most important things that you can learn and funnily enough is something that's coming up in a class soon is mm. a full bust adjustment if you are anything uh, well especially if you're using vogue or mccall's as we are mm -hmm. which are drafted for a b cup it um, don't mean b cup as in bra sizes but generally that means there's a two inch difference between your high bust and your full bust mm -hmm. if you've got more difference than that then you should be doing a full bust adjustment to get it to sit right yeah and it's one of those things that until you do it you won't even know how it's supposed to sit on you mm -hmm. um, but you can make a smaller size and it will gape or it will or if you make a big size to fit your shoulders it will gape even more um, so that is one of the most important things that I think you can learn when you're so learning to sew and you're trying to improve your dressmaking mm -hmm. and hopefully in the next few weeks we'll be having a class yeah. to teach you exactly how to do that <laughs> we're just working really hard on it all the hours of God send <laughs> so that's it for our slash attack I think I really enjoyed doing it again we should definitely yeah. do it more often yeah I think it gives you a greater sense of satisfaction knowing that mm. you've created something that you love that you didn't even know that you needed or that you would no. love but you've not spent any extra money obviously you must have spent yeah. some money originally, originally but, but it doesn't count it. once it's out of your stash no. does it it's like you've done it for free <laughs> it's, it's like both of these outfits were hiding in yeah. our stash but we just made them appear yeah as if by magic yeah so. and even if you have got all your sewing time planned out or you know exactly what things you're making for this season or anything else i still think it's worth taking the time to just have a sit and think about all of your patterns and um, go through all your patterns and then go through all your fabrics or vice versa and there's something about doing them both in short succession that allows you to connect a few dots that you hadn't necessarily seen before so you yeah. suddenly go oh that pattern would be great with that fabric mm. or that fabric would work with that pattern mm -hmm. but it's almost like you have to have them both fresh in your mind before yes. you can really think about it i like to get each pattern out mm. and then have a look at my stash mm -hmm. and just go mm, does that go with any of them uh no put it back and then grab another one yeah um, but i mean we, we're not suggesting that you make for the sake of making no um obviously if i'm sure there's a pattern in your stash that would fulfill a gap um mm -hmm. so i personally didn't have a single jumpsuit in my wardrobe so no. now i do yeah. <laughs> so we can't wait to see your stash attacks. If you've done one, message below and we'll go and have a and have a look on Instagram and we'll have see how yours turned out too. Excellent. We'll <laughs> see you guys soon for another video. Take care. Bye. Bye.